This video is for entertainment purposes only and should not in any way be used as a reference. With that said, I'm going to demonstrate how I personally would backfeed my house in an electrical emergency using a 30 amp 3 prong dryer outlet. What I'm about to demonstrate is in no way safe, is probably against electrical code and can burn down your house and even kill you. So please don't take advice from some guy on YouTube. Contact your local certified electrician for information on how you can properly power your home with a generator. So for this project, the supplies and tools that I needed were a 30 amp 3 prong dryer cord, a L1430P plug, and this is a 30 amp plug, so this is the plug that will go into the generator, and then this is the plug that will go into the dryer outlet. For tools, real basic, uh, all I need is a Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of uh, cutting dikes, and uh, a razor blade. I like to use the razor blade as well as the dikes when I'm removing the uh, wire insulation since this is such thick wire insulation. So to begin the project what I did first is I removed the ring terminals on the end of the dryer cord. Basically they, the dryer cord comes with these so that it's uh, easily attached to the back of the dryer but in this case we're not going to need them so I went ahead and already cut those off so the next thing that I need to do is go ahead and remove some of this uh, insulation from the wire so I'll go ahead and uh, do that and I think what I'd like to do is probably remove about an inch or an inch and a half of the insulation got that done. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is go ahead and disassemble this plug. Awesome. Alright, so I wanted to pop that off because I think I can put these wires in here better that way. Alright now, you need to make sure that you slide this outer housing onto the plug, or I mean onto the dryer cord, because if you don't and you put this on, then you can't get this on there. So, put that gasket back on there. That'll help it stay waterproof help keep water and stuff out. I've got to make sure I plug the right wires into the right terminals because if I don't all hell will break loose if I put power to this cord and it's not assembled the right way. So for me to do that X W Y. So power, neutral, power. And the cords or the wires on each end are the power, and the one in the middle is the neutral. So it's going to go like this one goes here, this one goes there, and that one goes there. So, you're supposed to put it in clockwise, and I just put it in counterclockwise, because I'm a ding dong. So let's try that again. Let's double 
check here. Power, neutral, power. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and trim these ends. Um, I don't know. I think that would be wise. I'm such a dumbass. <sighs> Alright, now I got that on. Now all we gotta do is attach the plug prongs. Maybe that's how you're supposed to do it. And here it is. We've got your male end that goes into the generator, and then the male end that goes into the dryer. Now, the reason why I personally like to do it this way is because I have a hard time buying a $200 extension cord and basically making it useless by cutting the end of it off and putting one of these plugs on. I'd much rather buy this for, it's like, I think $15 on Amazon and make an adapter so that this actually plugs into the extension cord and then this plugs into the dryer. Another reason why I like this is because if you had to you can disconnect the power from the house while you're still in the house. You don't have to run out to the generator because you can unplug this 
from the extension cord that runs to the generator and then you don't have a live cord with power on it anymore. Whereas if this was a long extension cord plugged into the generator, once you pull this out of the outlet, these prongs are live and they still have uh, you know, electricity. Whereas with this, once you pull it from the generator extension cord, it, it, there's no power anymore. The power is in the female plug of the extension cord and not the male plug. So that's another reason why I like to use this small little adapter. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me make my back feed adapter. And once again, please do not use this as a reference. I just wanted to show you guys what I personally do. This is not to help anybody build one of these. This is just to show you guys how I did it personally.